Stephen Fry, you could have been the hot priest. Because is this true? You seriously went to oh. have a, a meeting about becoming a priest? Yes, yes, when I was a teenager, I... You know, I loved so much about the church. I loved the music, I loved the liturgy. Not a Catholic priest, an Anglican priest. Of course, yes. I lived in the country, beautiful architecture, um, wonderful music, everything about it. I just fancied the clothes. Um, <laughs> I knew I could deliver fantastic sermons. Yeah. Um, so I was sent to see a bishop, the Bishop of Lynn, the Suffragan Bishop of Lynn, who decided that I would make a wonderful priest if, if there weren't one small problem, and that is that I didn't believe in God. <laughs> <laughs> So I failed at the last moment. I love that it got that far, yeah, that you got a meeting with a bishop yeah, and no-one had asked you about the Jesus thing. Yeah, I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Well, I, I do, and I still do. I mean, I, you know, I love, I, I love church music and, and, and I love the buildings. I love everything about it. I just can't quite take the whole story seriously. <laughs> well, I know, I take, <laughs> I take it seriously, but I just don't... Mm, yes. That <laughs> final leap. Yeah. There's probably quite a lot of vicars watching going, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my house. Because <laughs> uh, Stephen Wright, now, because you were one of the earliest people on Twitter, you kind of really yeah. took it up. But now you have a kind of love-hate thing. Are you on it at the moment or off it? Oh, moment? yes, I'm on it. I've been on it for some years still. Yeah. I, I, I suppose the difference is now that I don't really engage as much. You, yes. you just can't. So it, if you think of it as a notice, you put the notice up on the notice board mm. and then you run away before watching anybody read it, so I don't get, oh. you know, yeah. the, the... It's yes. what's... It's the comments and the unkindness. I, I'm very sensitive. It's pathetic, uh, after all these years that I am, but I, I liken it to a swimming pool. People always say to me, ''Oh, but 99% of all the comments you get are very friendly and nice.'' And I go, ''Yeah, but if you said 99% of the swimming pool is clear, there's just one little turd in the corner, <laughs> I still <laughs> wouldn't get in the pool.'' So yeah, yeah. It just ruins it for me, unfortunately. You told me that on the Harry Potter audiobooks... Oh, Lord, don't. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I love doing the Harry Potter books. So, uh, <clears throat> How many hours of Harry Potter have you done in total? I can't remember. It's seven books, isn't it? It's a lot. And they got longer and longer each time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, from the first one onwards. And, uh, Joe Rowling was very um, convinced from the beginning that they should not be condensed or abridged, that they should be absolutely as she'd written them. Because she figured, and quite rightly, I think, that a lot of children would read them with their fingers going along, you know, they'd listen to them rather, their fingers following the text. And that was a good way to reinforce reading, apart from anything else. So, on the third one, I think it was, called The Prisoner of Azkaban, there would just happen to be a three-word phrase that, for some reason, I couldn't get out of my mouth properly. It was... Harry Pocket did it. I still can't say it. <laughs> Harry Pocket did it. Harry Pocket... And I, was, I went like this for about ten minutes. Harry Pocket did it. Did. The engineer was laughing, everybody was laughing. Uh, I said, look, we'll park that. I'll try and solve it at, uh, at, at lunchtime. And at lunchtime, I called up Joe Rowling, because she wasn't in the studio, and I said, Joe, would it be all right if instead of saying Harry Pocket did, did, did it, <laughs> could I say Harry put it in his pocket? Which I can say, easily. <laughs> and she... I could almost hear her smiling, and she said, no. <laughs> <laughs> and not only that, in the subsequent four Harry Potter books, she made sure the phrase Harry Potter did it was in there. <laughs> <laughs> so that was rather pleasing. <laughs> Uh, now, talking of children's favourites, uh, Harry Potter, the, the audiobooks, how many hours of Harry Potter <laughs> did you have to read? God, I think it's over 100, isn't it? I, I, well, of course, it, when it started, um, my agent called me up and said, there's this book called Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. That's what it's called in England. In America, it's sorcerer. Mm -hmm. Obviously, mm -hmm. philosophers are rather frightening. <laughs> 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 um, All right. All sorry, right. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Uh, anyway, there was, it was a book, and, and so I read it, and it was a, there was this boy, and apparently he was a wizard, and I, I met the author, who was called Joe Rowling, and she was really nice, and, and we read the book, and she said, oh, I, I've actually... There's another one, there's a second one I've written, and I said, good for you! <laughs> <laughs> little realising what had happened, but over the years, this extraordinary phenomenon blossomed. There was a... a and I loved reading them. Occasionally... People, there was a man stopped me in the street not long ago and he pointed and shouted across the street, My children go to bed with you! <laughs> <laughs> Please rephrase that. Uh, uh, let's not forget your marvellous work in one of the most successful British films of all time. That film is Spice World. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. There you are. Do your cameo. Yeah. Do you have any memory of that day at all? It was done at the BBC, that's all. Because <laughs> uh, that's all I can remember. Um, <laughs> in the BBC lobby, I think.
I'm pretty, you're sure, in that I, film. I'm pretty sure I was in that film I as well. Yeah, you were. I was a kind of judge or something. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember. Um, I remember. There were uh, so. Uh, the reason I did it, I don't know if you were saying, is because I had nephews and nieces. And Love if I hadn't though. done it, they would have killed me. Exactly. Because I could get their autographs. That's yeah. how huge they were. Yeah. There was this period when they were bigger than anything on the planet, wasn't yeah. there? Was, exactly. And, and I remember Victoria Beckham came up. Uh, not Beckham, she wasn't then. Victoria, whatever she was then. Adam. Adam is <laughs> yeah. Posh Spice, I think Posh her name spice. was. That's how she came, And she'd read one of my novels. She said, You wrote a book called The Hippopotamus. And I just fell in love completely. No. I just thought, what a brilliant, <laughs> stylish, clever uh, woman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you think, these Spice Girls, no, they've got something, I think. Yeah. And actually, <laughs> I remember. <laughs> Prince of Wales had been lying. <laughs> it was before Wikipedia, so how would she have looked it up? But the, um, the, 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 there was a the fiftieth. Um, uh, there was a special show for the fiftieth birthday of the Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, and and they were on it, and I was emceeing it or whatever it was, hosting it, and, and there was a line up afterwards. And they were, I mean, they didn't care. That was all girl power, you know, and the Prince of Wales and oh, wonderful, lovely, thank you so much. <laughs> and, and he got to them, and the first thing em, Emma Bunting um, yeah. said Spice. to him, yeah, she said, <laughs> she said, oh, sir, sir, highness, sir, sir, um, do you have a Prince Albert? <laughs> and he said, yes, I mean, his great great grandson, yes. Yeah. No, do you have one? He said, well, he's, he's, he was the husband of Queen Victoria. Yeah. No, but... I, and he looked at me completely baffled that he didn't know what a Prince Albert was. So I had to say, well, sir, it's, a, it's an item of intimate jewellery. <laughs> he said, what, what do you mean? I said, no, further south. <laughs> <laughs> he said, is he called a Prince Albert? I said, yes. And he was like, oh, my heaven, he had to have a lie down, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I admired the, the spunk, as it were, to, to you know, to <laughs> how an Australian would put it, you know, to... It's an icebreaker. Yeah, no, to, no. To, to ask him... <laughs> I think we have a picture of the, oh, the no, moment really? he met them. There he is. Yeah. Uh, well, that's me in the background. Yes, yeah, oh. uh, everyone seems very distracted by Jerry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Prince Charles is just pointing at her absentmindedly. <laughs> you know, he actually... He did tell me... I, don't, I think it's OK to, to repeat this, but Prince Wales did tell me once that the best piece of advice his father had ever given him he said, when, uh, when you're doing a photograph and um, you're doing a line-up and there are women, always look only into their eyes. Don't for a second let your eyes drop to their chest, because that's when the photograph goes on. Yeah. And if you look, he's not looking down. All the rest of us, even us gay boys, are looking at him. <laughs> People are insane. I've, uh, during Hamlet, there was a guy who uh, lifted up his laptop, not his phone, oh. his laptop, Started doing the emails. And you're just thinking. <laughs> Do you know that story about John Gilgood, who he was at rehearsing with someone, and, and and they put a pause in. He said, "Oh no, he was never pause in the West End. Never pause." <laughs> and they said, "Why not?" He said, "Oh, I paused once, and it was. A, I thought it would be a wonderful silence, and it was filled by a voice in the back row saying, "Oh, you beast! You've come all, all over my umbrella." <laughs> <laughs> Tell the people the story of Christmas in Norfolk. Oh, well, I which is amazing. Did, I did a line up for a show once, and uh, uh, it was a there was a royal presence, and um, the, the Prince of Wales said, um, "Apparently, you live in Norfolk, is it right?" <laughs> I said, "Well, I, I do have a place. It's not uh, not far from uh, Sandringham, in fact, which is the, where the royal family have a house." And he said, "Oh, wonderful!" I said, "You should come visit me for Christmas." Um, he said, "That'd be lovely, lovely, lovely idea." Of course, <laughs> I thought no more about it. And that Christmas, I had a real houseful of friends, about forty people, all squeezed together, and, and I'm a very early riser. I'm very much a lark, not an owl, and, I, and so I was up and I was making eggs benedict, I remember distinctly, and hollandaise sauce is a very, you know, you have to concentrate, you have to get the, the, um, the melted butter into the egg yolk, you have to really thin, steady stream. The phone went, so I was going, somebody answer that! Please, somebody! Well, no, they're all the 14 people showering, shagging, whatever they were doing, <laughs> and, and, and nobody was on, so I, oh, I picked up the phone, yes! I went, uh, can I speak to Stephen Fry, please? And I said, <laughs> yes, this is he. And he said, this is the Prince of Wales here. And I said, my brain, a little t part of my brain, sent a signal to say, oh, fuck off, Rory. <laughs> um, and, um, <laughs> then another part, because you always know when it's someone real, another part just overtook it and went, oh, hello, sir. He said, uh, I was wondering about taking you up for that offer for tea. I, I said, well, that would be wonderful. Uh, when would you like? When's convenient for you? He said, well, what about New Year's Day? So I said, well, that, that would be fine. So I kind of put the phone down and thought, 
Right, so I went into the hall and I shouted, a bit like Rick in, in The Young Ones, house meeting! <laughs> <laughs> and everybody sort of appeared at the top of stairheads and I said, the Prince of Wales is coming uh, for tea. And then everybody went, oh my God! And then there was this fantastic sight, um, which I could have... Um, I mean, I could have photographed, I should have done. Of everybody, I mean, Hugh Laurie hoovering the carpet. You know, like, <laughs> um, so we're all making tea, we're getting ready, everything's, the fire's burning, everything's completely ready. And we're all peeping out of the curtains like pathetic children, like that. And all these cars passing minutes. And then eventually, <coughs> two cars, <coughs> crunch, everybody's disappeared except me. Huh? <laughs> so I, the doorbell goes, and I think, oh, I must play it cool. Otherwise, he'll think I'm really uncool. And so I count to 15, and the bell goes again, and I open it. And he goes, oh, hello, I hope you don't mind. I've brought my wife. And there's Princess Diana comes out of the shadows. And he goes, hello, Stephen. And I go, I go hello. And everybody comes down. Um, and we have this tea party, and it's fantastic. And she's wearing cowboy boots, which suits her very well. He's not wearing cow boots, which suits him very well. <laughs> and, um, it all goes fantastically. Everybody's having a great time. Um, and then they go, and he says, thank you, everybody, says goodbye. And she <laughs> holds in the doorway, and she says, I'm sorry we're going, but I'm quite glad we're going early, because it's spitting image on tonight. And I'm going to watch it in my room. They hate it, of course, but <laughs> I love it. <laughs> when I'm in America, I, I have a Tesla, and it drives itself. So it yeah. has an autonomous mode. So it's wonderful when you have friends, you can scare the living daylights out of them <laughs> by being on the freeway and then, you know, they don't see you. You just pull the stalk back three times to go into auto drive. And then you just think, oh, I don't know. We've got a book. <laughs> and, and they go, what you, keep your eyes on the road. No, I can't be bothered. And I'll look around the back, <laughs> back and it drives itself. Another one you can do as well, good trick, is, uh, is if, someone, if your passenger falls asleep, which I hate, because you've got to do the driving and there's no one yeah. to sort of talk to you, I, I wait till they start waking up again, and I close my left eye, and I just do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm lucky, it's perfectly safe, but they absolutely... <laughs> wake up! <laughs> <laughs> how, long, how long was that gone for? <laughs>